a faculty mentor in Cal Southern School of Business, Dr. Danny Babb is an internationally acclaimed economic and financial strategist and an expert in real estate, online education, and entrepreneurship. She has authored seven books on topics ranging from online education and distance learning to business investing. Her work has been published in the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, and the Washington Post, among other publications. An in-demand speaker and consultant, Dr. Babs appears regularly on international news media outlets, including CNN, Fox News, MSNBC, and has been featured on NBC's Today Show. In addition to being a, a TV news personality, she's an enthusiast for democracy, the economy, capitalism, people in general, living one's dreams, and realizing one's passions for life. She has devoted her career to engaging with people and guiding them in their quest to make their personal goals and desires become reality. We extend a warm welcome to Dr. Danny Babb, our keynote speaker. Welcome, people in general. <laughs> to Dr. Don Hecht, our founder of California Southern University, Dr. Carol Ryan, President and Chief Academic Officer of our institution, Dr. Carol Stanton, Chief Operating Officer, members of our esteemed faculty, family and friends, and most of all, the graduates of our class of 2011, whether you're attending in person or online, welcome to your commencement ceremony. I want to thank you for the honor of speaking at this most important milestone event in your lives. As graduates at the bachelor's, master's, and doctoral level, today you enter a new world of opportunity and possibility. There is no doubt that the world has become incredibly difficult to navigate. We face economic uncertainty and emerging global challenges that are unique to our time in history. There are issues facing our generation that others have not been asked to contemplate, let alone meet. And we are badly in need of strong leadership in many areas where we do not have the benefit of historical precedent to navigate our way through. It is often asked who will solve these new and daunting issues. It is those who can think outside of the box with a vision and those with the fortitude to make a difference in the outcome of our time, who truly care about the impact of our decisions and are not afraid to speak up, those with specialized knowledge and expertise and an understanding of the social interactions that take place in a technology-driven society. These characteristics are some of the defining differences between those that have made the decision, like yourselves, to earn an education and face this turbulent time head on, and those who have decided that it is too difficult too time-consuming or too demanding to commit to. You are among the few who have chosen to make it happen and your future will be what you make it. I don't have to tell you that getting here has not been easy. All of you have had some doubt along the way and maybe you even doubted yourself. I remember the first time I sat down to write chapter one of my dissertation and I wanted to give myself plenty of time so I allotted a full week really a long time in my world, after work to write it up, and when I sat down to write, all I could think of was, OMG, what did I get myself into? One week later, on my self-dictated deadline, I joyfully turned chapter one into my committee chair by email at four o'clock in the morning, who was not at all surprised by the turnaround time, but had only two words of wisdom to share by morning. Start over. <laughs> So hunched over at my desk and feeling a little down, using lifelong insomnia to my advantage, like many of you, I worked until dawn on my paper and got up a couple of hours later to go to work and lead a technology team who thankfully put up with a very tired and very cranky boss. In hindsight, I doubt it was coincidence that most of them tried to have their hours directly opposite mine. 
Over the next four months, I had many surprises coming my way, mostly ending with the same words, start over. And the second most common phrase, which I still hear often today from colleagues and traffic cops, maybe a little too often, is slow down. And one day that might stick, but frankly, I hope not. Along the way, like many of you, eventually, I had to become my own biggest advocate, drawing motivation from critics and doubters and finding inspiration where many others might find a bit despair or even give up. Yeah. At the time, I was a technology director for a big real estate company, and my boss, after one meeting I will never forget, positioned himself an uncomfortable three or so inches away from my face, a full-scale invasion of my personal space, hovered over me, his toupee sliding to one side, <laughs> fake tan, fake tan gleaming in the fluorescent lighting, and said, no woman working for me is going to have a PhD. His words included a few others that I cannot repeat here today, and my reply did as well. I was frustrated and down for about two minutes, and now I thank him for becoming a huge motivator. I kept a picture of his artificially bronzed face on my wall <laughs> as a target to hone my dart throwing skills. And when I needed a burst of sheer willpower, I would look at that picture and have exactly what I needed. Would any of you let someone tell you that? I have a feeling your reaction would be very much like mine. One downside to being a fast-moving person, as many of you know, is not taking the time to celebrate milestones and accomplishments. Within an hour after my own dissertation defense, I was back at the office, went working on a Windows server migration with my team, and I didn't stop for two years to realize, hey, you know, I finished that PhD, cool. And even that was a 15-minute revelation, which resulted in, uh, now what? So I went home and I started writing my first book and decided to leave corporate life behind and become a full-time entrepreneur and online educator within my usual one-week time frame. So please stop right now, if only for today. Graduates say, hey, I did it. I did it. Each, each of you have had your moments of motivation and your moments of doubt, yet you sit here today and I can see your smiles of accomplishment and achievement on your faces, and I hope that you spend time reflecting on all that you have done. And to anyone that doubted you, belittled your goals, or tried to break your spirit along the way, there are a few extra darts in the reception area to work on your own dart throwing skills I will be happy to share. In a difficult economy, many people ask, why do you spend time in school? Is it worth the cost? What exactly are you doing on that computer at 2 o'clock in the morning? Don't you know American Idol is on again and you missed your mom's birthday again? There will be other birthdays and there will be other idols. To those we say, we choose the world that we live in. And there are two worlds today. There's a world in which most Americans live, which as of last night, has a 9.1% unemployment rate. And if we count those individuals still looking for work, additional work, or underemployed, or those who just flat out gave up, that number is 16%. That is the other world. Then there is your world. Those of you graduating today with a bachelor's degree, you face half of the, uh, the national unemployment, around 5%. Those of you waiting to come up on stage and re receive your master's degree from your dean, your unemployment rate is 4%. And those of you sitting here today waiting to be conferred with your doctoral degree, even in today's economy, face a 2% unemployment rate. Imagine what these numbers will be when our market recovers, and it will. So for this fact alone, to those who ask, is an education really worth it, you tell me. In today's tough job market, companies demand that their employees have the ability to interact and react in a social context online, communicating thoughts and ideas on that silly thing called the internet. Surveys show that you double your chances of earning a six-figure salary, if you have the ability to communicate well in a written format. Even today, when salaries are stagnant or in many industries on the decline. But those of you sitting in this room have years of experience clearly communicating concepts and thoughts with the precision and expertise of online graduates. And perhaps equally vital to your survival, you've learned when to virtually bite your online tongue. Like in statistics. <laughs> Asked again, is education worth it? You tell me. Today, even Fortune 100 companies with their often lifelong employees retiring with cushy pensions are increasingly run like dot-com businesses, lean and mean. 
They are looking for the brightest individuals who are self-directed, self-starters, and internally motivated. Does that sound like anyone you all know? You completed your degree without coming to a classroom every Wednesday night being motivated by the momentum of the class schedule or personal interactions with fellow students or perhaps the stern look of a professor who was formally perched in an ivory tower. You did it through your own drive and force of will and you would not be sitting here today if you did not possess the qualities that successful organizations are looking for. So once again, do we really need to ask if the time and commitment to earning an education is worth it? You all tell me. I work with a lot of venture capitalists who are looking for, for entrepreneurs who can not only put together a plan on paper, but who can commit to a deadline, a self-imposed deadline, and follow through regardless of the hurdles that are thrown their way. With no excuses, no obstacles too great, no barriers too big, no procrastination, and no complaining. They don't want you to say it, they want you to prove it. And you have done that. You have followed your own plan of action, and you've overcome every obstacle put in your path. And still were asked, is education worth it? You tell me. As adult learners, many of you already have your career set in motion and you look to a more fulfilling life as a result of your hard work. You will all move on to do different things after earning your degrees, and some of you will continue online and further your education. Others will start new businesses, write books, open professional practices, become educators, or move up in your current careers or areas of study. Without a doubt, though, new doors will open and you will walk through some and wisely and cautiously avoid others. Some of you, like me, may get bored easily and do all of these things at once, becoming a jack of many trades. These career options all bring their own joys and frustrations, and some might make you cry like a baby. Like being a book author when a publisher sends you a letter saying that your book had more returns last quarter than it did sales, and they will be shredding all excess copies at your expense. It's hard not to get a little down, not that I'm speaking from experience or anything. Um, but when you get your first book royalty check, business startup funding, or when you see a troubled client make a real breakthrough, you will have put to good use those ups and downs, and just as you have done today, you will have achieved excellence. We gather together, united by education and by those who educate us, your efforts of tirelessly logging in at 2 a.m. to post assignments to instructors you may have never met in person, maybe over for now or not, but your compassion for others and your passion and commitment to problem solving is now greater and more enhanced. Life is full of difficult choices and complicated events. Often we have to make the hardest decision of all between two rights or two wrongs, picking the best of the good or avoiding the worst of the bad. And in all areas of life, we must constantly seek and keep our minds open for new opportunities that present themselves often which we had no intention of looking for and perhaps we didn't even want, but thankfully we found them anyway. May you encounter and passionately pursue these opportunities with the same tenacity that you have your education. We all touch lives by our mere existence, but each of you has chosen a great reward and a great burden to be able to produce good as a result of your education. It brings the highest of social responsibilities but it's also one of the truly greatest gifts of all. So now, let me pose the question to you. Was it all worth it? You tell me. Yes. And in closing, I wish you all the ability to work like you don't need the money, to try like you have never failed, to live with no regrets, and to quote Mark Twain, to love like you have never been hurt, and please, even if just for today, graduates, go celebrate your success. <laughs>